Welcome to the Michael Cooley podcast on rethinking leadership. In these episodes, we will look at leadership with a fresh perspective and take your leadership effectiveness to the next level. For more information, go to cooleyinstitute.com and follow Michael's continuous learning insights on social media. What are the three pillars of leadership? Leadership is based on three pillars. Three pillars. You take any of them, then we're not talking about leadership anymore. That's if we want to talk about, you know, serious science of leadership, if you can call it a science, or art. What are the three things? First, it's about people whether they are individuals, groups, or organizations, or societies, or countries, it doesn't matter. It's about people. That's the first one. Take people away, then what are we talking about? The second thing is mobilization. Take mobilization away, then we're not talking about leadership. Because if you just take people and you're not mobilizing them, then how is this leadership? So mobilization is at the core of leadership. Now, how you mobilize, that's an entire universe. We can go into that at a, you know, in a later, in a different conversation. But definitely the second pillar is mobilization. And the third pillar is a good purpose. And by good means a purpose that would make the reality of these people of the people that you want to mobilize, a better reality. Because if you take that out, then it becomes becomes manipulation. So purpose is, gives you, it's, it's the why of mobilization, is why do you want to mobilize these people? That's what purpose is. Purpose is the new reality that you want to create for these people or that you want these people to create for for themselves. So take out purpose, you have manipulation. Take out mobilization, there's no leadership. Again, take out people then, what's the point? If you remember these things, then you know what leadership is about. It's about mobilizing the people whom you care about towards creating a better reality. Whether this better reality comes from being unstuck, solving a problem, removing unnecessary suffering and pain, or it's about capturing an existing opportunity or creating a new opportunity. Point is, life has to become better. And you want to mobilize these people in your family, your organization, your department, your team, your group, your country, whatever that is, whomever you care about, so that they collectively work together to create a better reality. That's what leadership is about. I'll answer you at different levels. minimum level is because you care. If you don't care, you don't exercise leadership. Why would you mobilize, put all the effort, the hard work, the risky effort, because leadership is a risky enterprise, to mobilize people whom you don't care about? So that's minimum, that's absolute minimum. If you don't really care, then don't, ex- you, you won't, I won't say don't exercise leadership. You won't complete your work. Because as soon as it becomes hard, as soon as you start finding, finding difficulties, facing problems, facing resistance, facing quote unquote enemies, facing people who, who want to sabotage your work or who have a different point of view or who have different interests, whatever it is, 
and the pain of resistance, the pain of that conflict becomes hard and dangerous for you, you will back up. You will, you will go back or you will, you will retreat. Hmm? As soon as this happens, you will stop, you will abandon, you will resign, you will leave. As soon as this happens. So the only thing that will keep you in the game is care. You want to take it to a further level? And it's not many people can understand this, or at least can go to the depth of it, because it's a difficult thing to, ex to, uh, to, to accept, at least in this time of or a, an age. It's love. You can't exercise leadership without love. You can't. Forget it. Why? Because there will be a point where you will have to sacrifice. There will be a point there where you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? There will be a point where you feel you are in danger. There will be a point you will feel that your entire existence or your own interests, you know, are at stake. There will be a point, there will be so much pain on your behalf. So you need something to justify why you should stay in the game when everybody's attacking you. When you're, when you're spilling your spirit, your heart for the sake of others, and yet they attack you and criticize you. And they lobby and conspire to destroy you. There will be a point where you say, you know what, what the hell, let me, I mean, why should I do all of this? That's where the word love comes into play because you can't take the word love out of the word sacrifice. Hmm? Because love is an act, it's, it's not a feeling, it's an act. It's, you have to exercise love. And real love at some point will require sacrifice at your expense. So why would you lead if you don't love? when leading will demand that you sacrifice and often precious things precious things that's why what's in it for for me when i exercise leadership what's in it for you maybe nothing except a commitment towards people whom you love There might be a third reason, and the third reason is your values, who you are as a person. When you find yourself in a situation and you say, I can't just sit and do nothing. I can't. I can't just sit and watch this is happening, all of this is happening. Opportunities are being missed, or people are suffering, people are destroying, you know, in self-destructive mode. The company is dying, the country is dying, but your family is collapsing, and do nothing. I have to do something. That would be a reflection of who you are. That will be a reflection of who you are because you will not be able to stand yourself if you didn't do something about it. So that's what's in it for you, to be at peace with yourself. Because not exercising leadership, not making an intervention to help people remove unnecessary suffering and pain or to help people enjoy a better life, create better opportunities, not doing that will make you feel guilty, will make you feel, oh no, no, lose your sleep, will make you lose your alignment with who you are as a human being. And there's nothing more painful than that. There's nothing worse than acting in separation or in contradiction with who you really are as a person. 
So in this case, you do it for yourself. Because you can't forgive yourself for not doing it whatever is necessary. Now, it doesn't mean that you will fail, you will succeed. It does not mean that at all. You might fail. And for you, sometimes you're in a situation where <coughs> most certainly you will fail. You look, you look at the situation and you say, There's, it's, it, it would take a miracle for us to fix this or to get out of this mess. But you still have to do it. Because some causes are worse failing at. Some causes are worse even dying for. And people die or accept to fail only if they care or if they love or if doing that is a reflection of who they really are as within themselves or if if doing that is is who they are as a person if and 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 or let me put it a diff different way not doing something means they can't live with themselves that's why leadership is rare because it needs care love and a super strong set of values where you will have all the courage of in the world to do what you think is the right thing for the sake of others at your expense but you have to do it because that's who you are you're asking me what drives me when I'm exercising leadership? Is it love? Is it care? Or is it my values? Okay, in my case, uh, it's all of them, all of them. But mainly, mainly, it is because of who I am. In my case, I'm talking about in my case. Because sometimes you're in situations where people around you are strangers the organization is not yours it doesn't belong to you you don't own the organization it's not part of you and and the people who are involved are strangers sometimes you don't even know their faces if it's a large group large organization you know a country you don't even know the people So what happens is that is that you just act in, and that's in my case, you just do what you feel naturally, who you are. You, you just, you just, it, you don't even think about it. You, it just comes to you. It's an overwhelming feeling. It's an overwhelming force that's within you that's pushing you to act in a certain way. And maybe, you know, at the same time, you have voices around you telling you, how is this your problem? There's no logical explanation except that it's a reflection of who you are. You can't see that something could be done better and, you know, that people could live a better life and just sit still and do, do something about it. Even if it's not your own company, you don't owe the company, you're just an employee. You can't see that you know, opportunities are being wasted and and do nothing about do do nothing about you can't do that. It's not you. So you go the extra mile, you do the ten extra miles, the one hundred extra miles, the one thousand extra mile, but you have to do that because this is who you are. And people criticize you, but it doesn't matter. And other cases of course it's about love also. When it comes to family it's about love, when it comes to friends it's about love. When it comes to people whom you care about, it's about love. And in some cases, it's about care. I don't know, it's about nature or art or culture or animals. Something had to, has to speak to you, speak to your soul, connect with your heart, you know, connect to your being. You cannot exercise if it's not a personal involvement, if you're not all in everything within you, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your heart. If it's not all in, everything is absolutely in, at the most genuine and authentic level, you cannot do that. I'm talking about serious, 
leadership, you know, real great leadership, beyond great leadership. That's how it is. That's why it's hard. You can't isolate yourself from what you care about. You cannot, you cannot say, I'm not going to care about what I care about. You cannot do that. It's painful to do that. You can't. You can't say, I'm not going to love whom I love. You cannot say that. You can force yourself to do that, but it's going to be painful. You cannot. It's very hard to do that. They, you might try. You might escape. You might turn, you know... Um, you might, you might, you might turn your face in the other direction. You might, do whatever mechanisms that you want to do, just to try to ignore that that reality exists. But you can't do it for a long time. Because sooner or later, something within you will take you back to that. That's why it's said, that's why, that's why care is care. That's why love is love. That's why they're so, they're the biggest forces in nature. Because you, you can't. They're overwhelming. They can dominate anything. And if you have it within you, if your heart is full of care and love, and strong values, then separating yourself from this is painful. So you go back and do it again. And that's your destiny. Thank you for listening to the Michael Cooley podcast. Please visit cooleyinstitute.com and send us an email. We would love to hear your comments and thoughts on this episode. And remember to follow Michael's continuous learning insights on social media.